Hey everyone, so today we'll be solving another cross-site scripting lab on Portsugar Academy. So let's get started. So this lab contains a DOM-based cross-site scripting vulnerability on the home page and it uses jQuery selector function to auto-scroll to a given post whose title is passed via the location.hash property. So I'll tell you what this is in the, you know, um, the lab, right? And to solve this lab, deliver an exploit to the victim that calls the print function in the browser. All right. So let me just go to the lab and open the source code of the page and check what is the jQuery code that is present on the page, right? So let me just scroll down and here I have the jQuery part of the code. So here, if you see that we have something called as hash change, right? So what it basically means is that, you know, whenever the hash change happens on the URL, I mean in the page, this function gets called. So what do I mean by that? Okay, let me just come to the lab here. So you might have seen this uh, hash symbol in the URL, right? It can have some data after the URL like A, B, C, D, E or, you know, 1, 2, 3, 4, something like that. So this value, right, is called as hash value, right? And whenever this value changes, that is after the hash, right, the hash change, this particular hash change triggers, which will in turn call this function. So basically, whenever the hash change happens on the page, this function will be called, right? So to make it more clear, let me actually do one thing. So let me just go back and... Uh, switch on the intercept reload the page and let me just intercept the response reload the page and intercept the response am i intercepting the responses yeah intercepting the responses forward and here i got the response so let me just scroll down and add some code here inside the function console dot log this function is called right let me just close it semicolon and intercept is off right so if i go to the source code of the page now and if i scroll down you can see that i have added some code in the source code of the page right so what it will basically do it will just print this particular uh, string called as this function is called whenever the hash change happens so let us see if that is working or not right so let me just go back to the page intercept go to console right and I'll change the hash value. Currently it is A1234, right? I'll change it to A1234.5. Enter. And as you can see, that particular function is being called. And the proof is that this particular string is being printed in the console, right? And if I change the hash value again, right? Maybe to 2345, enter. You can see that it is being printed again. So that means whenever the hash changes, whenever the hash value changes, this function is being called. And that is why we are getting this print right now let us actually see what is happening after the function is being called right so let me just open our notepad here so first you can see that it is actually creating a variable called post and then it is actually checking for a section tag right section tag and a class called blog post so basically the section tag with a class blog post that means this entire thing right and then inside that it is checking if any of the header value that is h2 value matches that is contains right this particular thing right so first let us actually see what is this one right so let me just copy that and go back to the lab and in the console i'll just paste it enter and as you can see this is nothing but the value of the hash right this particular one and if i change it to one two three four five and if I give that decode URI component function again, you can see that it changed it to 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So basically, this entire thing is nothing but the value of hash, right? So what it is basically doing it is taking the hash value here. It is taking the hash value and then it is checking if any of the header that is H2 contains our particular hash value. And then it is simply going to that particular post. That's it. So basically, if in this entire thing, if any of the headers, right, H2, this headers, h2 if that matches to the value whatever we give for the hash then it will simply scroll to that particular post that's it so to make it more clear what i'll do is after the hash i'll simply give h2 of uh, this post maybe yeah this post right awkward breakups so i'll just put it here after the hash first i'll come up so what will happen after i press enter so this thing will be replaced by awkward breakups, right? This particular thing is nothing but awkward breakups. And this will check if there is any H2, right? If there is any H2, basically H2, 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 right? If any of the H2 matches awkward breakups and it will simply go to that particular post, right? So if I hit enter, you can see that it came to that particular post. Now let me just do one more. I'll copy this 
copy and paste it here i'll come to the top of the page hit enter and you can see that it has come to that particular post so that is what that particular jquery thing is doing here on the page right now where is the bug so let me tell you where is the bug here now in older versions of jquery what happens is that we have this selector function right in jquery there is nothing but this selector function here right this selector function right and inside this we can select anything on the page right so in the older versions of jquery what happens is that if we give html elements to the selector function it will actually create those elements on the page for example if i give this payload right image src is equals to x on error is equals to prompt prompt one close right if i give this particular payload to the selector function right so what happens it will select that payload right if i give this value to the selector function earlier what it used to do is it used to create those tags on the page so basically it will try to create an image tag on the page with an invalid source which will ultimately cause an error which will call this prompt function on the page so that is the vulnerability here so if we can pass an xss payload to jquery selector it will actually execute that payload so that is the vulnerability that is present on older versions of jquery so let us actually try that so in this lab how are we actually giving this payload so that is with the help of decode uri component so whatever we give to the hash value right it will ultimately come here right so instead of giving a valid value to the hash we will actually put the payload itself so that particular payload will come here and this jquery selector will actually try to create those tags which will cause an error and that is how we get the prompt right you got it okay let me just tell you again so this decode uri component function is actually taking input from the hash right in the url so instead of giving a valid value we can actually give an xss payload so that this xss payload will be taken as input by this jquery selector right and that is how the xss payload will happen got it okay let me just actually try that on the page so let me just go back to the lab and instead of uh, so first i'll give one two three four or something right and then i'll actually put the payload copy right so i have pasted it right so what will happen first the hash change happens right first the hash change happens and this function will be called and to this selector jquery selector we are actually passing html tags that is an xss payload and to this particular jquery selector we are actually passing an xss payload which will execute a prompt function on the page right so let me just hit enter and see if that is working or not enter it worked right so basically all you need to do is you need to give an xss payload as a value to the hash in the url that's it it will execute that payload but if you see our lab will not be solved yet right so let me just go up you can see that the lab is not solved yet so let me actually go back to the description of the lab to check how to solve it right so to solve the lab deliver an exploit to the victim that calls print function in their browser so basically we need to deliver an exploit to the victim that calls the print function all right now before that i actually want to ask you some question right now this is our exploit right this entire thing is our exploit okay now do you think if i simply sent this link to the victim does this payload actually gets executed the answer is no if you simply send this link to the victim it won't execute your payload and i'll tell you why so let me just open an incognito tab a private window right so say that this is victim's browser and i sent him this link and when victim opens this link this payload won't be executed I mean this particular payload won't be executed i'll tell you the reason why this particular exploit won't work because on the source code of the page if you see we have this hash change right so only when the hash change happens this particular code gets executed i mean this function is called right but on victim's browser whenever you send him this link you have sent him with the hash value of this much right by default you have sent him a hash value of image src equal to x something right which is by default right the hash value never changed on his browser right from the start whenever you send him the link it is this one the value of hash right it never changed but our payload will be executed only when this function is called that means only when the hash change happens that means when the hash value in the url changes only then the payload will be executed right but if you simply send him the link it won't get executed because the hash value never changed so in order to actually chain the hash value on his browser as well we can use something called as iframe so i'll tell you how to do that so let me just open the notepad so what we can do is 
we can create an iframe right iframe with source is equals to our labs url so copy our page url right and i'll put abcd here right as default source of iframe and after that we can use something called as on load property of iframe which gets executed once the iframe loads right so iframe is equals to this dot src is equals to this dot src plus our payload which is nothing but this one right i'll just copy i'll put it here and this should be in single quotes right this should be in single quotes sorry this should be in single quotes and this entire thing should be in double quotes after on load so on load this in double quotes sorry double quotes and close the iframe so let me actually tell you what is happening here right so let me just drag it a little bit so now whenever this particular iframe is sent to victim what happens is that the first thing that happens on his browser is that this will be opened this link will be opened right on his iframe the first thing that happens is this will be opened and after that what happens is this onload function gets triggered which will in turn what it will do is it will change the source that is the source of the iframe right this source this src of the iframe it says that hey the source needs to be updated with a new value is equals to the source which is already present that is this one right plus i'm adding something this that is nothing but this image src that is our payload so what happens when this exploit is sent to victim first it will open a page with this particular hash value of abcd in the iframe right so the value is abcd and after that the onload gets triggered for the iframe and it will change the source value of the iframe which is equals to the current source which is already present plus this particular extra payload so this will be sorry copy and the hash value will be changed so initially the hash value of the iframe was abcd and then when the onload gets triggered to this particular source the hash value gets changed to abcd along with our payload right and that is how the hash change on the page gets executed so initially it was just abcd right initially the hash value is abcd once the onload gets triggered on the victim's browser our payload will be added right and once our payload will be added on the page the hash value is changed right and that is why hash change gets triggered which will in turn call the function which takes this particular value in the selector right in the selector of the source code right if you see this one and that is how our payload will be executed on the victim's browser first it will just be abcd by default and then this hash value will be changed when the onload function is called and that is how the hash change gets triggered and that is how our payload gets executed and one more thing to solve the lab we need to actually give print instead of prompt so i'll give print sorry not here here print right i can remove this one so let us actually see if this exploit actually works right so copy so let me just go to the exploit server and deliver this to victim so control v so iframe our lab link on load this dot src equal to this dot src i think this should be fine okay let me just deliver this to victim deliver exploit to victim all the double quotes single quotes are fine and there you go you saw the lab so that's it for this video thanks for watching don't forget to subscribe and i'll see you in the next video thank you